Hi, welcome to Embedded Programming, and this is Section 5, Part 5.2. Just to make sure that we're on the same page, Section 5 was all about pulsed modulation um, control for motors, and we look at a number of different ways Part five in section five is because I'm looking at Arduino Uno and an Arduino Shield. I'll get into what those look like in a little bit. So let's jump in. So the star for our show today are going to be this Arduino Uno. You don't have to use an Uno, but that is why I have. Um, I'm going to be using and this Arduino motor um, Shield board for revision three. I'll show you exactly where to get it, where to get the um, information and documentation. But before we do, let's take a quick rundown of the shield. We have channel A and channel B, that's our two motors. We have power in. This board supports up to, I believe, 12 volts. Um, I can't remember, but we'll, we'll double check that. Bottom line here, the important thing is that you, if you're using less than nine volt, nine volts or less, you can just have a single power supply to the board for your motors and it can also supply voltage to your attached um, Arduino board. So that's great. On the other hand, if you're like me and you want to use something that's closer to a 12 volt to 12 volts batteries power supply for your motor, then you will have to find separate power supply for the attach, attach Arduino and you have to also disconnect um, the cut a trace on this board so that it does not supply that um, voltage to the Arduino and potentially damage it. Um, some other things in this board is that you have the LEDs to show you the different direction that the motor is going. You also have those connectors up to the top. The white ones on the far right, those are analog input. Um, the one in the middle are um, analog output. Those four connections, the orange and white ones, are some tinker kit connection type i'm not sure but think um it's sort of like groove the groove connector except groove is four pin but whatever um that's there and then the three um the two green ones with the four pins those are twi or two wire interface that's basically i squared c there and so you have i squared c in and i squared c out so the way you can chain a few boards together if you're using i squared c okay like i said on the back of this board, um, there are some places where you can cut the trace. Now, some of the other features of this board is um, up to the top there, you can see it says brake disable. This board actually have a pin for you to say, bring the motor to a grinding stop. Now, usually if you um, you start your motor rolling and you just cut the power, inertia is gonna keep that motor rolling a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using brake in my project, um, down at the bottom on the left, you'll see it out there, two out of disable pin, one called SNO, SNSO, and another one is SNS1, and that's the current sensing. Again, um, this shield has something that I didn't see in the other shield, which is the ability to sort of sense or read back an analog value. Um, from those pins, those will be analog input you configure and read back um, a value that gives you relatively how much current is being um, is passing through those motors. So if you're supposed to be moving and you're not moving, but then you're sensing high current, then you probably have something like a stall, right? Um, and so that can damage your motor. And so maybe, I don't know if it has circuitry to automatically cut off that sort of stuff, but it does have the ability to sense how much current is going through. So you can look at current draw and all these other things. Maybe you can sort of do some fancy calculation how much current is available in your battery and if you can make it back to charging or all of this other good stuff. Um, I don't think I'll be using anything that sophisticated anytime soon. So chances are I'll be cutting those two for sure. I haven't cut them yet. Now, right next to it on the right is that V in connect that I talk about. If you're going to be supplying more than nine volts to your motors, then you will want to cut this pin. Now, this is another picture of my board. I found this on Google. Finally, the connection is going to look like this. Um, I did not draw this. I found it on, again on Google when I was looking for a picture of the board. Um, 
and this look exactly like what I would have to draw anyway. So I just figure why not reuse this. The only difference there is this shows nine volts, but keep in mind that I'm using like 11 point something volts. It doesn't really matter how what you use to power your board, but this, this is basically the connection, connect the two motors as I show you, which is attached to my platform. And as you can see in the little picture down to the bottom there. So, okay, let's take a look at some details of this board on the Arduino website. And so for that, if you go to arduino.cc, so let's just do arduino.cc. And you go to the Arduino website and let that load. And let me open this up a little bit. Um, da, 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 and zoom in, make it nice and big. And so we can go to store. And then on the left hand side, we'll click on Arduino here. And then you see shield, I'll click on shield. And then I don't know where it's gonna be in the list, but there's an Ethernet shield. That's not what we're looking for. Though interesting 20 something bucks. <laughs> That's why at the time I decided to get that other board with Wi-Fi built in because I was like, why get a board and buy a shield? But oh well, you saw how that worked out um let's scroll down and here's our model shield revision 3 which is what we're looking at and if you scroll down a little bit you'll see in an overview of the board and you can see it's built based off of the l298 um chip motor control age bridge and i think we've seen those in other motor control boards that we've played with um that's the specification for it like i said operating voltage is from 5 to 12 volts and you have um, about two amps per channel. Um, that is pretty decent. I don't think the board I have would need anything more than two amps or even one amp. That would be a lot. Um, though the Citron board allow up to 13 amps, um, but I don't think I would even need more than two amps. And then uh, we talk about the current sensing. Um, we have we talk about the brake and braking capability that you ha you have on it as an option. Um, there are already pins connected for that. Now, in terms of how to use this board, um, you can read all the details. I'm not gonna spend time reading all that for you, but remember I said that if you, um, they recommend using external power because five volts, they supply to Arduino. If you use Arduino to power your motor board, then you have to be using some very, very small motors. But if you're gonna really use any decent side motor, you should do external power and provide it directly to the motor board. And if your motor uh, requires more than 9 volts, we recommend that you use separate power lines of the shield and um, you separate the power lines of the shield, which is what I talk about, how you cut those power lines for V in connect. I would have liked if they had actually put a jumper, but they did not put a jumper. They just put a trace and I was a little bit worried about cutting that. And I'll show you a video of me cutting that in just a little bit. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward to use. These are a pin to control the um, motors. So you have your direction pin, which is um, data pin or GPIO to 12, pulse width modulation D D3. And so with, it, with these two alone, um, it's pretty much like the Citron board where we had pulse width modulation or speed, and then we have a direct pin. Um, we have a direction pin, something as low as go one way, high goes the other way. Um, if you want to stop, just no pulse whatsoever. It's just sort of straightforward. All right, so that's that. Now, uh, just a little FYI. Now, as you know, I was looking for a way to control my board, the Wi-Fi board that I had, um, which is, let's go here, um, and then see, go to Arduino, let's go boards. And so this is Arduino Uno, and I'm looking for the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi 3. Um, I don't know what that is. SMD Wi-Fi 3. Uh huh. Come on. Where is it? Wi-Fi 3. Oh yeah, there it is. And so um, I wanted to use the Wi-Fi on this board so that I can just simply mate it with the shield, and I pretty much have my robot platform. Um, this board does not support Formata. And so while searching for support for this, I came across something called TinyGo. And what TinyGo is, is 
just being able to write a regular Go program, but compile it for embedded boards instead. So instead of compiling to run on your desktop or something like that, um, you know, Windows, Mac, Linux, you can just compile it and upload it to an embedded board, just like you would write, you know, the C code or something for Arduino. Um, they showed that how they have, um, they say they have that, you know, support for micro bit. I think I show you my micro bit boards and whatever, but if you don't know what they are, there's some of these small embedded board. Anyway, I went through and play with it. Now I really don't want to use this because I still will have to write a Go application that runs on the board that I'll have to talk to and update. But you know, at least now I'm, I get my wish of a single language. So it's not the ideal situation, but it's sort of better than me having to write C++, I think in my opinion. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think the project is quite there. If you want, you can play around with it. A couple of things. One, I went through the installation, set it up, got it running, and then I found that out it was sort of messing with my other Go installation because you have to use a different compiler tool chain, LLVM, and some of, when I said the paths and so on, and export those, um, include directories and so on, my other Go application were breaking. My non-embedded application, just regular Go application were breaking. So I cannot really do that because I'm still doing the series on, you know, um, Go on the run and we're looking at, you know, proto buffer and all this other stuff. So I need to compile regular Go code and I can't afford to be messing around with things breaking. So that's one thing. The other thing is that it actually does not support, um, you know, the Wi-Fi on my, my board that I have. And so um, I really can't use it anyway. So it does support Arduino Uno, that, that works. I was able to upload it to Arduino and that's why you see there's a directory. Oh, I haven't show you that yet. So anyway, that's enough about Tiny Go. So let's close this because we're not gonna work with Tiny Go. Uh, I just wanted to show you that. And so let's go look at our code. So again, we're doing embedded programming. We're in section five, motor, all about motor control. And so we're looking at this as our last section before we go on to section six. At the end of section six, we should have a platform that we can control over, over Wi-Fi. And after then, it's just gonna be adding sensors and making it do silly stuff. Um, but here in section five, we're gonna wrap up by looking at this final motor control board and see this motor control shield. And so let's start our Visual Studio Code Editor. And so essentially what I did was just copy the code from section four. And it's the same code we use pretty much throughout this entire series. Like you've seen me, I wrote the code in part one, but I keep reusing the same code and just modifying the little parts that needs to change. And this part is, is no different and I'll show you what's different. Um, in terms of circuit, these are all the images that I showed you already in the presentation. So um, nothing really exciting there. For the code, we have exercise one through five. Um, this tiny go is some of the, the tiny go code that I'm going to leave here just for, since I mentioned it, if you want to play around with tiny go, once you have it installed, how to flash it and put it um, on your board. And so, yeah, this is the port when I connected my Arduino board to my computer. Um, I also did a pulsed modulation demo, um, fade in an LED, and I actually use it to control the motor speed on the Cytron board. And it would also work for this board too. So um, I don't really see the benefit really for me. And especially since it's breaking my application, I'm not gonna use it. Okay, so let's start off with the first um, example and the rest are pretty gonna look much look the same. And so if I could select this and I say select for compare and I already updated the code and I select this and I say compare with selected. Uh, let's close this. You can see all I did was just basically change the comment at the top to say that oh, this is Arduino on the Moto Shield. Remember when I say shield, I mean something that's mated with that particular type of board. Revision three, well, I should spell this properly. And then if you scroll along and look at the differences, I put a reference here or rather the link to the same page that we're looking at in our web browser and I com commit corrected this. This said Node MCU, which it should say Arduino. But notice that for motor A, we're using pin 12 for direction, three for speed, and motor B, we're using 
13 for direction and 11 for speed. And once you set those, remember those are string values, our code doesn't need to change. In this example of the code, let's sort of remind ourselves what this code is doing. So I'll close this and because the, the changes are going to be pretty much the exact same thing. Only those values change and the code remains unchanged otherwise. Let's look at the connection now. So here's my connection for my battery. I This is too fat to go in there directly. So um, I, I solder it and using tape, not electrical tape, but hey, I've yet to get some electrical tape. Touch that. I cut it. Uh, so, okay, let me show you a video of when I was cutting this. Okay, so, okay, so that was me cutting it. So now I put this together after attaching the power and my two motors, as you can see. Now, I think I mentioned this before with these motors, they actually, they have encoders. So there are four other wires here, power and ground, and then two for encoding one and two, which basically allow you to not only detect the speed, but also the direction. I'm not using that yet, but I will, that would be one of those other things that I would need to send back, or I'd like to send back from my robot to my brains. Um, which we have yet to figure out where the brains is going to be. But remember, my goal is to have the brains run on a regular desktop computer. Now, because I cut the power to my... Um, so let's plug this up and see. Um, I shouldn't have any power going to... Only my motor control board should be powered up when I connect this. Um, and so I connect power. And let me put this in the bottom. And so I don't have to worry about this board being powered up. There's no light on, it's not powered up. So only this top board is powered up. And now when I connect this, as you can see, the light came on at the bottom. And so now that's all powered up and ready to go. So let's run our code and see. So I'll open up my terminal here, make it easy for us to just stay here. So I do this, you know what? Let's go to this directory and let's go to Arduino. And these are example. So we'll do go run and example one main. I think you guys know this already. So we'll wait, we'll look and see what happened. We should hear um, a pitch song soon. Are you hear that? And we should start to see the motor turning. And there it goes, nice and smooth. And it starts turning at a very like, you know, low speed and uh, we got control of it and it's going up and up and up. It's getting faster. And this is exactly what we saw with the art when we used Arduino and the Cytron board. We got the exact same result. Nice smooth, and we were able to start controlling our motor, get it rolling around 40, 50, which is what you see there. Okay, so I'll stop this because it's like the same thing. Um, so that's gonna keep going. What I can do though is reset the code. I will cut it here um, in terms of testing. All right, so as I think about what I wanted to accomplish and how I've been approaching it, I don't really have a problem with my approach, but maybe I've been a bit too narrow. So what I mean by that is this. Um, I've looked at Arduino board and my ESP266, which is also Arduino board, but this is a Raspberry Pi. And I mentioned that when I introduced it to all my board, but it's very first old version of Raspberry Pi. I don't know what it was, but it came out to look like 2011. So this is really pretty old. And you can see from the SD card, what size it's using. And it only has two USB. The new Raspberry Pis, they have four USB. And I just order a Raspberry Pi A board, which is a little bit more square than this. And they got rid of Ethernet. I don't need RJ45. And so anyway, so I bought one. I should be getting that soon and then i bought a motor control board that has four motor i think i alluded to that before um that board was 15 dollars the raspberry pi was like 25 bucks the nice thing about that raspberry pi is that it has wi-fi built in so with wi-fi and imagine that shield that raspberry pi shield i can control my two motors and now i have this groove shield also for raspberry pi 
so now I can connect some of those Groove Connect um, sensors and all this other stuff easily. Well, we'll see. So I think the bot might end up being Raspberry Pi based instead of Arduino based. Um, but I'll see when I get that. That's going to be part six. I'm not going to torture you guys anymore with trying to just play around with controlling motors. We're just going to try and get this guy to what it's supposed to be. And we're going to use whatever we need to to get there. Um, so that is sort of all I wanted to show you about what's upcoming. Okay, that's it. Otherwise, I said this is taking too long. Now, one other thing I want to mention is that in order to help me get these videos out um, sooner and probably closer to on time, I'll be spending less time editing it. So apologies up front. If you see a bunch of crap in the videos um, that I didn't cut out, usually I'd record the video, then go back through, and then I'll edit out all the stuff I just ramble on about or whatever. But now you might see more of that just so that, uh, that allows me to get the video out a um, little bit earlier um, because I don't have to spend so much time editing it. Okay, take care. Thanks for your time. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Hit that little bell so that you're going to be notified when I upload videos. And of course, spread the word. And I appreciate all the time and the support. Take care. See you soon.